on this episode of Big Drive Energy. Rory McIlroy is back. He wins the Scottish Open. Incredible finish. We'll get into all of that along with our preview and picks for the final major of 2023. Crazy to think that it's already here, but the Open Championship at Royal Liverpool is this weekend. Uh, Another weekend of early morning golf, which I'll be stoked about. Get up, feed my kid at like 2 a.m. and just stay up and watch golf all night slash morning. So I'm hyped about it. And then we're going to talk about if Steph Curry could play professional golf. Is he that good? We're going to debunk that myth, if you will, uh, in this podcast as well. And of course, we're always brought to you by our great friends over at Pins and Aces. They sponsored the Corn Ferry Tour event, The Ascendant, this past week in Berthoud, Colorado, won by Nicholas Lindham. He uh, shot 20 under on that track, which we were combined 20 over, mostly because of me, uh, about a week and a half ago, but tough track. I could see where you could get to 20 under in four days, uh, put a couple of low 60 rounds together if you're making some putts and hitting it in the right areas, but overall, just a tough track, and congrats to him, and Pins and Aces brought out a whole new Colorado collection along with sponsoring the Ascendant that all the employees of the golf course and the tournament were wearing. There's a new Colorado spade shirt. There's a sick new hoodie. And then there's a Colorado evergreen polo with a bunch of little trees on it. It's amazing stuff from pins and aces. They're always releasing new stuff. They're sponsoring our tournament this coming Friday, the midsummer open at broken tea. We're going to have a blast out there on Friday. Tons of great sponsors coming out for that event, but pins and aces also has the new Patriot collection. A lot of sick head covers in that one, along with there are a few Kenny, south park driver head covers left they are out of the towelie putter head covers they sold out of those almost instantaneously but there are some kenny driver head covers so make sure to head over to pins and aces.com use our promo code bde like big drive energy and get yourself 15 percent off your entire order plus free shipping that's bde at pins and aces.com 15 percent off plus free shipping all right let's tee it up Rory McIlroy with the shot of the year. Is that the shot of the year thus far? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what was that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, uh, I would almost say Robert McIntyre's shot before that was even better than his. Um, they're both very, very good, but it was just kind of crazy that they almost both hit the same shot on 18, even though, uh, uh, it's a lefty and R is a righty, but they both were cutting it kind of back into the wind and both hit it in this made, made the 18th hole look easy. I think those uh, two birdies were the only two birdies on 18, right? The three, there was three total birdies on 18 on Sunday and two of them were Rory McIlroy and Bobby Mack, the hometown Scotsman. Uh, that is the hardest hole on the PGA tour. Uh, It's kind of weird because it's a double sanctioned event between the DP World Tour and the PGA Tour, but the 18th hole at the Scottish Open is the hardest hole in in relation to par on the PGA Tour. It was playing at 4.6 the past couple of years. So for them, the two leaders to hit the golf shots they did, uh, I think the thing with Rory is is that um, he, he just, he doesn't hit that kind of golf shot. And that was a shot with a club that he brought from his garage the week prior. Yeah. Was that the, I, I love how the announcers talk about like a driving iron. She's like, it's like a driving type club. I'm like, it's just a driving iron. Like that's what a two iron is now. Um, but I can only imagine the clubs Rory has in his garage. I'm sure there he's probably got like the sickest setup. So uh, yeah, I was very, very impressed with, those two final birdies to, to get the victory. I really thought he was going to choke again um, because that's just kind of what he's done all year is piss it away. So uh, for him to get, get the job done, but now that that kind of takes him out of the conversation to win the British in my mind, I I don't think he's going to win back to back weeks. And if he does, that's going to be all time good, but I I just don't think he's going to be able to do it. Yeah. Well, it's funny because you winning back to back weeks, uh, Phil Mickelson did that in 2013 with the same events, the Scottish open 
and then going into the open championship. But it, it's funny to think like if, okay, say Rory doesn't birdie eight, 17 and 18 and loses the tournament by one shot to Robert McIntyre. We I feel like great about Rory this week. Yeah. Yeah. He's like the far and away favorite to win this week, but, and he still is, which I don't necessarily a hundred percent agree with. Um, along with Scotty Scheffler, John Rahm, those guys. But yeah, it, it is crazy what winning kind of what it takes out of you and what it does to your game. Like it's this build up to something. And then once you get there, you're, you know, you're, it almost like deflates your balloon a little bit. Like, I don't know how much juice Rory's going to have to come in and, and win this week. So it just is kind of bad luck for him. You kind of hate to see it a little bit for him, but at the same time, you know, if he's just that dialed in and there's a few, uh, a, a few notes about the round that like, especially his putting, um, he always feels like he burns more edges than anybody. Like, especially this season, he's burned so many edges and, and just hasn't felt like he's been able to get anything to go. But then if you notice on 18, the putty hit, he immediately like hated it. He, I think he thought he missed it because he took his, one of his hands off the putter and just kind of like set his putter down at his side and was just like, Oh fuck. And then it curled in. So I don't think he even hit the putt he wanted to hit, but ultimately it was the putter that, that got him there making those two clutch putts on 17 and 18. So I think that is the biggest like vote of confidence for Rory because he basically hits it very good every single week. Like there's no, you know, there's really no questions there about his ball striking. It's, it always comes down to the putter. So I think he's got to feel pretty good, all things considered, about where he's at with his his short game and his putter. Yeah, so it's his first win since the CJ Cup back in October of 2022, which feels like forever for him. Uh, his 37th career professional win. And did you see the clip of him going up to his wife afterwards and his kid? And his kid was kind of indifferent. Poppy is her name. Uh, she was kind of indifferent towards Rory and she and then the wife goes yeah she, she just wanted to go hug Tommy talking about Tommy Fleetwood um and uh Daniel Rappaport had a really good tweet he was like it's funny to see the difference of you know players and their wives or girlfriends after their first career win where the, you know they're in tears it's it's pretty life-changing and then after your 37th professional win you get a good job lovey that's what his yeah. wife said to him it's just funny the difference of like, oh yeah, he's he's been here before, he's done this before. She's like, yeah, just stack another one into the uh, into the pocket there. Right. Well, dude. So Robert, I got another thing. Robert McIntyre. Like, did you see? He's got like a. It looks like his daughter's like four or five years old. He, I swear to God, he looks like he's twenty two. I'm like, did this kid have a kid when he was like nineteen? He is twenty six now, but he still looks so freaking young. Um, and, and for him too, it kind of stacks up back to back weeks of, um, ultimate sadness. Like he loses this tournament on 18 to Rory and then he lost, uh, he had the lead in Denmark two weeks ago on the DP world tour and proceeded to basically throw it away. For those of you who didn't watch it, he made, I think he made like triple on his 14th hole he had like a two shot lead. He ended up not even making it into the playoff. So he's competed back to back weeks and gotten very close to winning and has not won. So I do feel for that guy, but he is a, he's a real gamer. Like just that lefty, uh, he's got a lot of like tilt on his, uh, downswing into his follow through, which nor it, it's almost like, a I would say him and Sahith Thagala have relatively similar moves um, where they shallow it kind of late. Like they're they're They have a lot of um, tilt away from the target, but they still rotate very effectively. So it works for them, but it's just not your typical PGA tour move where a lot of those guys have their spine very centered over their hips and they're rotating through to their target. Like McIntyre's hips. If you see at impact, his upper body's tilting way back. His lead hip is, way in front, but he still plays very, very good golf. It's, it's just hard to like hit a cut from there. Like, so that I think even more McIntyre 
uh, his second shot on 18 meant that much more because that's not a shot he ever hits either. Like you saw Rory hit a cut and McIntyre hit a cut and neither of them like to play a cut at all. So uh, it was fun to see like the contrasting styles and what, okay. So here's a, here's a question for you. What is your least favorite shot in golf? My least favorite shot to hit. Yeah. Or like my like you're if somebody's like hit this ball flight, you're like, oh fuck. Uh I think like a like a low draw. That's probably low. the hardest shot for me to hit. Cause I hit the ball pretty high overall most of the time. And then um I can hit the the high fade, I can hit the high cut with an iron, I can hit the high slice. Um I can hit a higher draw, but when you have to like hit a low draw, um, or even just a, a more of a swinging hook. I always leave that out to the right and it ends up where my target is. And then when I try to not hook the ball, I end up hooking the ball. It's just the, <laughs> the laws of golf, just the law of, of swinging the club. Yeah, no, that sounds about right. Honestly, for me, the high draw is probably the hardest because I have a real tough time. Like I either end up hitting a push cause I just get stuck back on my, cause I, I always over tilt back, like trying to really like lift it in the air, get it airborne. So I never end up like, or, or I, I I would say I generally hang back on that trail foot and just flip at it. And a lot of times I end up either pulling it. Like I actually had this shot when I was playing uh, last week or earlier, this was earlier this week. Um, And I was trying to hook a pitching wedge like around this tree. And I actually, I have to aim even further right because I get the club face so shut that I pull it and then it hooks. So it's not like I aim at some place and it starts at my target and then hooks. It like starts left to my target and then keeps hooking. So I was probably aiming like 70 yards right with this pitching wedge. And I actually ended up getting it pretty online. But uh, I know that Rory, a lot of people were like, it was, it was well documented on the internet that everyone was like in love with that low cut Rory hit. And uh, that's definitely not his forte, but, that's not as hard of a shot, especially with like that club as a lot of people think it is. Um, and with, was he out of the fairway or was he in the first cut of rough? He was in the first cut of rough. See, that Um, makes it even easier to keep it low because it's coming out knuckling, like hitting that shot out of the fairway, I actually think would be harder because you're creating more spin and the ball's going to want to balloon on you. If you're in that, in the first cut, cause you don't want to be in the thick stuff, obviously, but if you're in that low rough, but just enough to like get a little grass between the ball and the club face, then that actually like is not that hard of a shot to hit for a tour pro. Yeah. Well, I don't think, I think it's not that hard of a shot to hit for a tour pro. That's a very uh, big disclaimer there. I just think it's the fact that Rory always hits the same kind of shot. Like he's not even, uh, all these guys can shape their shots. Um, and that's, I think I tweeted about that where it's like watching Rory hit the exact opposite, opposite shot shape, both height wise and movement wise that he normally hits is what people try to do that know remotely anything about golf. You know, once you get past the point of like learning how to hit the ball correctly and you go play a few times and then you start learning more or watching YouTube videos or whatever it is, um, by the way, if you're watching our podcast on YouTube, give us a like and subscribe on the channel. Appreciate that. But the uh, the fact that like you know you can hit a shot or how to hit a shot or you've hit it once, then it, it gets in your mind that you can do it again and again. And watching Rory, I think that was the impressive part was how close he hit it. The, the stakes, the fact that he had been choking down wins and losses for months and months in a row, it seemed like. And then just the the overall, you know, crowd reaction, everything like that. I think that's what made it one of the better shots. And I don't think a lot of guys on tour can hit that shot. Like that was, I, I think I told somebody that's a, that's a shot that maybe four or five guys on the entire PGA tour could, could go and hit right now. Uh, and then you add that pressure onto it and that takes, you know, that takes another 20 guys out of it. I think a lot of guys can hit that golf shot. But then you take away, you know, take it, take into account the pressure and what was going on. And, and it, it was just so pure and into the wind and so good. Um, yeah. and hit it close enough for him to make it. Cause like you said, he burned edges all week. 
I saw a tweet, I want to say mid Saturday, well, middle around Saturday. So it's still the middle of the night here, but I think Rory was leading at that point or right tied for the lead. And he'd missed like eight or nine putts inside of 12 feet. So he could be running away with these events if he was just rolling it in. And it's funny to see the contrast of styles of guys who are really good, all really good in their own right, but they do certain things so much differently and, and so much better. And right now, two of the best ball strikers in the world, Scotty Scheffler and Rory, they're winning events and Scotty's on some ridiculous run of top tens and top fives, but he can't make putts either. And so it's like that you can really pinpoint that one part of their game where they're just lacking according to PGA tour standards. And that's why they're not winning every single event. But I want to ask you, so you said it was hard for Bobby Mack, which first of all, I think he looks old. I think he could be like 40. Really? Um, I think he, yeah, looks like, like he also, so I'll disclaimer it with this. Like I saw, he was like DP tour, DP world tour rookie of the year in like 2019. And he looked like a teenager. And I still think he looks like he did when he was a rookie. So I could see maybe because he looked old to begin with, that's why he looks young to me because he does have that like quintessential like Scottish, Irish. I hate to clump them together because you know, people do not like being confused one for the other. Um, he is or is he English? I think. <laughs> no, he's Scottish. Is he yeah, Scottish? He's from, okay. he's from Scotland. Yeah, he was like one. Of, he was. That's why everybody was so into him. You know, otherwise, if he was from England, I don't think people would have cared much. And it was cool to see. I think that's one of the very few events in the world, even and maybe the only event in Europe or across, not in America, where you would see people cheering for somebody not named Rory McIlroy if it's those two as the final two, essentially. Like he oh, was getting sure. so much love from the people in Scotland. And I, I saw a tweet that was like his tee shot on 18, by the way. Can we talk about that for a second? Oh my Maurice? God. No, Robert McIntyre's. Oh yeah. That was one of the nice worst Robert. tee shots I've ever seen in my entire life. That was a Mito Pereira reincarnate from the PGA championship. And then he ends up making birdie. But uh, there was a tweet with like a, one of the, I don't know how to describe it. One of the hmm faces like on like when you type the emoji. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Like the curious look. Yeah. Curious. And it was like Robert McIntyre from Scotland hits it in, hits it so far left into the weeds and in, in a bunch of Scottish people and ends up with a perfect lie. And then it was like curious face. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, you, there is definitely spots where like if you. And that's like any tour event. You want to hit it far enough offline to get it to the trampled areas. Because if you hit it five, 10 yards off the fairway, that's in the thick shit, you know, that's right off the fairway in the really thick rough. If you hit it 40 yards offline, like I remember what Jordan Spieth did a few years ago at uh, the open. Well, more than a few years ago, but I think he hit it onto like the driving range and then he had a great look and ended up making par and, won the open but if you hit it far enough offline especially with all these courses like over you know these link style courses um there really isn't much danger depending on where you're at like when i played Mirfield, there's so much room in between holes that like you couldn't physically miss it far enough over to get into another fairway because there was like 100 yards between every hole have you um, seen me hit the ball buddy <laughs> I, I think you would be at like struck you would struggle to slice the ball far enough to get it into another fairway. But a lot of these link style courses, there's another hole running, you know, depending on where you're at, there's another hole running next to it. So uh I think that uh there is times when when you can get lucky um by hitting it so far offline that it's actually decent. So he did the right thing by slicing it hard. And I will say, um that is like, so the wind was in and off the right for McIntyre. And that is the hardest win for a lefty because the hardest win for a righty is in and off the left. Would you not agree? Like when, yeah. It's, oh yeah. When you're trying to double it's, it's double into you essentially. Yeah. Because then you're, I mean, you naturally already fade it like more, more, more than fade it, but. Fade is uh, nice. Fade is a yeah, nice term for my a, golf. A drive. nice, a generous term. But if you start getting it working left to right at all, it is going so much further right than you thought it would. And that was what happened to Robert McIntyre. He was probably trying to 
bleed a fade out there, kind of hit it straight and let the wind fall, make it fall left. And he just overcut it. And then it slices 60, 70 yards. And he looks like a, a fucking hack. So, um, but yes, he, he did get a, a generous lie over there in the rough to be able to get a fairway wood on it. Like, you know, you got to have a pretty fucking good lie to hit it that well out of that quote unquote fescue. Yeah. Well, and one last thing, uh, on Bobby Mack and it, I don't think he would feel as bad. Like it was still heartbreaking and I want to get into Rory and him talking afterwards. And Rory said, I'm sorry. Cause there was a crazy on the Twitter sphere. There was a crazy reaction to that, that I was just kind of shocked by. But, um, the fact that Rory won the event, like birdieing the last two holes in the toughest hole in golf, essentially in professional golf, to win the event makes you feel a little less bad. Like what he did was still incredible. And the only thing that would have made it better is if it had won him the event, but making birdie on that hole to take a one shot lead when you're, you know, a couple groups ahead of, of the guys that teed off later, like you, there is not much better than that. And so it's not like he lost the tournament. Rory just won the tournament. So I don't think he feels that bad. Like, of course you want to win your hometown open your, you know, your country's open beat one of the best players in the history of the PGA tour in the history of golf. But like, there's not much you can do when you get to, when you make three there and then he goes and makes birdie birdie on the last two holes to basically, to basically beat you. So I don't, I don't think there's too much of a head hang from him, especially, you know, even though to me he looks 40 being as young as the dude is, um, he's got a lot of good golf ahead of him. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him play really damn good this weekend at the open championship. No, I, I totally agree. I think that at the end of the day, when you get beat like that, you can live with getting beat, but beating yourself like he did two weeks ago in Denmark makes it that much tougher. So uh, I'm very happy for him um, that he's just playing as good as he is. And uh, good to see Rory in the winner's circle, but like it's just a week too early because it, it I don't even I, I don't know what the line is on bet three six five, but I wouldn't hate to see a little action on Rory missing the cut just because he did win this week. So it's like the ultimate letdown. You know, he he gets out there. It's a little windy. It's a little tough. And he just kind of like, man, you know, it's we're on the next year's majors. You know, we're trying we're trying to get one next year. So we'll see what happens. I'm not guaranteeing that, but I would, I think it's worth a sprinkle, you know, like how often does a guy go out and win and then play really well again the next week? It just is not that common. So. Yeah. But I think he's a guy that kind of bu can buck any trend. Like he's a guy that you, you would say that about normal PGA tour players and still the best golfers on the but planet. He but joke. He, he's, he's not the most like stone cold, if it was Brooks, I could see it still being like, okay, it's a major because there's certain dudes that just get up differently for majors. But obviously Rory in the last decade has shown that he goes in the opposite direction at majors. He competes everywhere else, does everything else very well. But then when it, when it comes time for the majors, it's like, he's, he's got to get over that hump. And maybe this time next week, we're talking about him winning back to back and um, what kind of feat that would be. But, I just don't, I don't see it happening. It's just not a, not a very common thing. Like unless you're Tiger Woods, which none of these dudes are. So, yeah. Well, so just so you know, to, for him to miss the cut on bet three, six, five, uh, is plus five fifty. That's so, pretty good odds to throw a little action on that. I, yeah. And, and so speaking of bet three, six, five, we're going to get, tell you guys about our new betting partner and our favorite place to place all of our big bet energy bets. And that's bet three, six, five. Let me go through and tell you real quick. So when you go to bet three, six, five and go to, to bet this open championship this weekend, if you search by the players tab, they have the main tab, players tab, tournament tab, player markets, extra. It is amazing how much bet three, six, five has for you to bet on. So you can go Rory to, and you click on Rory McIlroy. You can go to win outright. You can go any of the top two through 10 finishes and the odds on that. Uh, top 20 finish, 30, 40. First round leader, first round top five through 20. You can, he can be the top Irishman. The, there's also a top former winner, a top European winner bet, top Great Britain and Ireland bet. 
top British bet, um, top former winner first round. Like there is so many things to make the cut first round score, first round, total birdies, total pars, Eagles. I mean, there is so much to bet on bet three, six, five. And if you sign up with the code DNVR three, six, five, you get $200 in bonus bets, which we will be using to our, um, to our favor, if you will. And, and we have those in our pocket for each week when we post big bet energy. So make sure you're following us on Twitter at big drive energy and on Instagram at big drive energy pod. We'll put those picks out today, actually Tuesday, uh, since the tournament starts so early, give people a chance to look at them. We're up over 25 units on the year. Um, and hopefully some of these bonus bets from bet three, six, five, will get us a, a ton more units. I'm Captain Mush this week. We'll get into our picks in the preview of the Open in a little bit. But um, a couple of my guys are boosted, and they have boosts every single week as well. So make sure to check out Bet365. Use that promo code DNVR365 at 365 at sign up, and then you're getting $200 in free bets when you sign up. After you deposit $10 and place a bet for $1, you must be 21 plus physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh, yeah, Bet365 is my favorite app. It's it's so easy to use, and especially for betting golf, you don't have to like search through and find the players. You can just go to that player and see every single bet that you want to place on that individual player. So make sure you check out Bet365. Bet it is our new app for Big Bet Energy, and it is the only app we use to bet on golf each week, which we are highly addicted to doing. Uh, and responsibly. It, responsibly, yes. But we've got a winner. We've got a winner coming for you guys this week. I can feel it in my bones. Um and we'll give you that, and all of our odds and bets are placed through Bet365. I want to tell you guys also about another new partner we have here is Breckenridge Distillery. Uh, gambling and drinking, there's not two better things for us to have an ad read for here at Big Drive Energy. Breckenridge Bourbon is the official bourbon of the Denver Broncos. There, It's the world's highest distillery, so uh, you can take that how you will, but geographically located is the highest above not the equator. That would be completely sea wrong. Level. It's highest above sea level. There we go. <laughs> in the entire world. It was founded in 2008, and they have a blended bourbon whiskey, a high rye mash American-style whiskey. It's one of the highly, most highly awarded craft bourbons in the entire U.S. It's won nine times best American blended whiskey at the World Whiskey Awards by Whiskey Magazine. They also have incredible vodkas. They've got uh, – there's just so many options. They've got a coffee was- vodka. They have a spiced rum that's fire. Yeah, their coffee vodka's fire. Like, this is actually a sponsor that I personally love to drink and have been drinking for years. And if you ever get the chance and you're in Breckenridge, go to one of their tours and stop by, like, grab a cocktail at their their restaurant. Their restaurant is amazing. Um, everything about that place is awesome. Like, great location. You're up in the mountains. Great liquor. Uh, they do, like, a a little tour and you get to try everything and you get kind of drunk. Um, so that's always a good time. Like I love Breck distillery. So I, I can vouch firsthand and say that it's a great spot to go check out personally. Their whiskey's awesome. And then I think last year they did a, uh, a couple of cool Broncos bottles um, where they bottled a couple or had a couple of former Broncos players come up and, kind of like help select uh, the barrels and things like that and add some different flavor notes. So they do so much cool stuff, but just a a great product that I personally endorse as a drinker myself. Yeah. It's, it's a product that we don't even have to like, they're like, Oh, have you tried this? Or do you want some samples? And of course we want some samples, but we're like, we can speak to this product personally. Um, We have Breck distillery at our, all our tailgates this year. We've had, Breck bourbon in our sh- on our shelves at our houses for years. It's our favorite bourbon to drink, just straight, neat with a little. I'm an ice guy. Uh, I don't I'm like anything drinking anything warm. But they've also come out with a new can seltzer line called the Ricky R I K I. They have a bunch of different canned uh, canned cocktails, so they're doing it right. Breck Distillery is available in all 50 states, so make sure 
you visit your local retailer and look for Breck Distillery Bourbon or check out BreckenridgeDistillery.com for home delivery of award-winning Breckenridge spirits. All right, let's get into Steph Curry winning the, I don't even know what it's called. Maybe you can assist the, me on this one. The Reno Tahoe Open. Um, yeah, the, the Celebrity Pro-Am or the Celebrity something. Yeah, I don't even know exactly what it's called. They just do it every year on the uh, at, or at, at Tahoe. And it's American basically- Century Championship is oh, what's now called on, in Lake Tahoe. And this has sparked the debate. Could Stephen Curry play professional golf? What say well, see, you? So there's been a lot of um, stuff floating around on the internet about uh, all these, you know, uh, other players that play football, you know, other sports saying, is Steph Curry like a professional golfer? Like, could he be that good? Um, and, and that's like the, the tale as old as time with what they're showing on, uh, TV versus like what they're not showing on TV. I think Steph Curry's like a legit plus handicap. And I think he is a, a very good player. Um, but like, look at what he did a couple weeks ago against Kelsey and Mahomes. He looked like your fucking run of the mill scrub. Like he did not look good. Mahomes and Kelsey ran them out of the building. Like, so I think on like a week in week out basis, is he a very good player? Yes. Could he com- compete at the at a professional level right now? Absolutely not. And that's just the the nature of golf you know like that's how hard it is is somebody can look that good and of course they're going to show him making putts and like making a hole in one and shit i did hear something that Mar- so have you ever heard of marty fish yeah is yeah he, he's he's a, he's a tennis professional player. tennis player yep. yeah t- tennis player um or was he a surfer no like, he's I, a tennis player they got okay. me all fucked up because i heard somebody else talking about marty fish and marty bird and then somebody was like, is that the guy from Ozark? It's like, no, no, it's not. Um, yeah. So Marty, Marty fish, who, who am I thinking of? That's the, the surfer. Um, cause he's a good golfer too. Uh, Robbie, can you, can you troubleshoot that? Can we, I, yeah. I can't remember. There is a, a surfer that's a uh, sh- I want to say Sheckler. That's but that's a Ryan like, Sheckler. No, that's a skateboarder. Um, Robbie Robbie Nash, surfer. He's a, yeah, he's won twenty four windsurfing titles. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> oh my god, you're the worst. I just yeah, searched okay. Robbie Surfer. No, there. I forget what the guy's Kelly name. Slater. Are you talking about Kelly? Yes, Slater? yes, yes. Thank you, Kelly Slater. Jesus, I think he, Robbie Kelly. What a fucking disastrous Kelly, minute of podcasting Robbie, that was. I I just could not put my finger on it. I think he's a very good golfer, but anywho, Marty Fish. So this dude's like a legit player too. I want to say his lowest round ever is like sixty two or sixty three, like very legitimate stick. Um, I think he had an opportunity on 18, uh, to either tie or win. I'm not sure. I didn't follow it that closely if I'm being honest, but I heard that somebody yelled in his backswing, like, um, intentionally. Oh, absolutely. It was completely intentional and it's a stable for an event. So he was leading it. And at that point, uh, he had, if he would have made a birdie, he would have definitely won it. But Steph Curry could only make Eagle to win it, which he ended up doing. Um, the, the top of the leaderboard here in the, in the, uh, American century championship was Steph Curry, Marty fish, Joe Pavelski, Mark Mulder, Aaron Rodgers, Annika Sorenstam, Tony Romo, and then, uh, John Elway finishing T nine. Wow. Love that from, from our boy, from our childhood hero. Yeah, what is he, almost 60 years old, and he's still fucking golfing his ball out there? Um, I will say I did see a video of Tony Romo at uh, uh, a pro-am where he had, like, a speaking obligation or something, and then he was golfing. He could, like, hardly, like, stand up. Like, I think physically speaking, his body is so beat to shit, even as, like, a 43-year-old man, like, in order to, like, get – 
out there in golf. I bet he has to stretch for like 30 to 45 minutes just to warm up because they wanted him to like hit a, a random tee shot kind of unannounced. And like he could hardly like walk up the, the tee box is like five feet uphill. He could hardly like get up the hill to uh, get to the tee box. So pretty wild. I, I mean, if you can just imagine what his body went through. Uh, oh, well, can and we talk about that in general. Let's let's touch on that specific topic for a second of hitting a golf shot when you're not warm at all. And people think that just because we're above average golfers you know i'm we're not professionals here we're not pga tour players but just like willy-nilly hitting a shot off of you know randomly isn't it's not going to normally turn out well especially if it's a t-shirt a driver no it's not going to go well at all um and that actually reminds me i think uh have you watched the new show quarterback yet no i have not have you watched it? it good oh yes it is so fucking good like it i hate patrick mahomes and like they get shots of when Brittany is up in the box, like screaming and my girlfriend and I were watching it. And I was like, you could not pay me a million dollars to sit in that box and listen to Brittany, like screaming nonsense. It is like the worst, but also the best. And then Kirk cousins, like that dude's not even, I don't want to get too far into it. You watch it, but uh, he's like a cartoon character. He doesn't even feel like he's a real person. He's just so, um, so like, not a beat, but it, it almost gives you like he's there's got to be something wrong with him because in front, like his view or our view of him is so like he's like singing Bible songs to his kids when they get in bed. His wife, like I swear to God, is like the most innocent, like quiet, like sweet person I think I've ever seen before. Just like the, the classic, like Minnesota, nice, you know, Midwest, nice kind of, of people, but definitely a show you got to watch. And then also Marcus Mariota, um, kind of showing the other side of things where he struggles, gets cut by the Falcons, all of that, just a, a great show. But I was, I, I thought of that because I was thinking of Tony Romo and then I thought of just watching these dudes get hit and like their body, their body, like the physical toll it takes on you. I can only imagine like that's one thing that a lot of people don't think about is when these guys retire and they have, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in Tony Romo's case. But like at what point can you really enjoy it because your body is just so beat up, you know? Yeah, Andrew Luck decided to skip all of that and and just uh, take himself out of the game and go off the planet and be just a normal dude but yeah we used to have back at the valley we used to have a guy come play uh one of our i think knights of columbus tournaments every year that used to play d lineman for the cleveland browns and the dude put his credit card on the counter to buy something and his hand looked like it had been ran over by a, a hay truck like it was the most disgusting thing i'd ever it looked like it just got just chopped in half and then re-put back together it was unbelievable and i can only imagine you know that was way back in the day where the game was maybe a little bit slower. And I hate to say that, but also the protection and the I was gonna you know, say the, was the equipment was way back. worse. Yeah. Well, and, but, and who's, who's the dude with like the thing, the, the fingers that are just wild is it like Jim Brown. I, I think there's a lot of guys, but I think there's a famous one of like, uh, where the finger say, just like takes like it, a right turn in the middle of it. Yeah. His thumb is like a 90 degree angle sideways um so we just got a little off track there but that sports injuries always blow my mind and like even you look at guys like Steph Curry and all these NBA players they don't have to go through that same thing you know and that's why the age-old debate is like playing football versus playing like baseball or basketball or whatever because you can look at basketball players they can uh they can still get out there Charles Barkley um was out there at the century tur- or what is it called the all american century the reno american tahoe. american century championship at reno tahoe okay he so they're actually with, he uh he finished with negative 32 stableford points and how do um, they score that is bogey zero no it can't be dude two double bogeys are uh i don't know but he made a lot of them he made okay. let's see he made in round three, he made two pars in round two. He made three pars 
and in round one he made three four pars okay so he's the, probably the entire like, round and everything yes. else was bogeys and doubles okay so he's he's probably like a mid 90s like around 100 shooter i think that's what uh, yeah 90 92 97 and 91 i just sounded and like actually i lied he made a couple he, he made a couple of birdies in the last day he made two oh, birdies okay in the last day. So well, shout, there, shout out there was a video on instagram that got taken down where he calls himself an old fat fuck that's just hilarious uh chuck never ceases to um entertain even when he's on the golf course talking shit about himself it is nice to see him back in like golfing uh order like there i don't know if we've ever discussed this but like the yips and things like that where chuck legitimately could not swing in a, a club so <coughs> excuse me good for him to be back out there playing some golf and actually enjoying himself uh, but to round out the conversation, Steph Curry, I think you give him, uh, I think even Dylan Fratelli, uh, a tour player, DP World Tour, PGA Tour player, commented on one of the Instagram or Twitter, somebody's tweet about Steph playing professionally and was like, not, not a chance right now, give him five years and a bunch of mini tour experience, then he could maybe um, compete on the web.com to make cuts or the God damn the corn fairy tour. I can't quit calling it not its name. Um, but it, it just goes to show you like golf. It, and that is how athletes brains work too, because so many other sports, like don't get me wrong, Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes, the there's football players and there's basketball players that take years and years to hone their craft, but they're also so physically gifted that they could, have their brains completely wiped and just by their physical makeup and their physical stature are prone more to just go out and succeed the first time they touch a football. You know, Patrick Mahomes is built to throw a football. These other guys are, you know, they're very capable of running routes, catching footballs, this and that. Golf is unlike any other sport in the way, and I've said it a million times, LeBron, like you see videos of it, him at Top Golf, and he looks like he's the most uncoordinated fucking human being on the planet, and he's one of the best quote unquote athletes of our time. Um, so golf is unlike any other sport where just because you're physically gifted, that that holds no bearing on how good you can ultimately be at the sport. Like it, it definitely gives you a, a higher ceiling. But it also, you know, it, it doesn't mean you're going to be good by any means. So, like, that's where there's a separation of thinking between, like, an elite football player and an elite golfer. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, the, the original tweet was from Rob Gronkowski, and he said, he basically said, is Stephen Curry better than some professional golfers? Could he go pro in golf if he focused on golf like basketball? Every golf shot I've seen hit by him has just been amazing. Hole-in-ones, draining long putts, what's your thoughts? And uh, our guy Monday Q info tuned in and said no. Period. With just that, um, I one of the funny responses that I saw um, was from Matthew Wiley. I don't know who that guy is. He's a uh, looks like he's an ice expert, horse racing, occasional podcaster at Golflandia um, from Canada. But he goes, Jazz Jenna Watananand shot twenty one over at a gettable Barbasol in two days. He has eleven pro wins. He would still smoke Curry. And I think that's that's just the case. The, the the interesting thing that I think is is when you're boiling it, boiling it down to professional athletes becoming professional golfers. That's a much wider topic. I think Steph Curry, in itself, just the athlete that he is. If you take it down to that one specific data point of him, and he actually gave it two to three years of never playing basketball again and just playing golf and working on his game. I think he could maybe compete at like a very low mini tour level and maybe like Monday, you know, play a, play a corn fairy tour event and probably finish in the top 100. You know, like I think that's kind of, that would be like his ceiling if he gave it two to three years. I just think he's that good athletically for yeah. him to be as good as he is at golf right now. And he plays, you know, professional basketball and is one of the best basketball players and maybe the best shooter in the history of the game. Um, but I do think, you know, what, these courses and the setups for, you know, 
um, players that are not professional golfers, like these tournaments, the celebrity tournament, like on the 18th hole, he had to make Eagle to win it. And everybody's like, Oh, Eagle, you know, whatever he, you know what he had in on that hole? He had 140 yards. Oh, so, yeah. So it's like, you know, it's not the what same, the you know, they're not hitting 470 yards. Probably. I don't, I don't know. Something like that, but yeah, downhill downwind and he hit a good drive, but um, it's still impressive to make a putt like that in that circumstance, like not the pressure of Rory hitting the golf shot he did in the Scottish open, but oh, for yeah. a, I bet it's the, it's the same level of pressure based on the amount of, pre- you know what I mean? Like relatively yeah, speaking, relative the amount to of what, practice and yeah. the amount of times he plays and what he plays in versus Rory, what, and what he plays in, what he practices. I think it was about the same amount of a jump in pressure of making those putts and he I'm, made it. So I'm, I'm impressed by it for, I'm not no, going to do it like a lot of I'm, people. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Uh, and he actually has already gotten a few corn Ferry tour event um, exemptions. He's played at like TPC stone brain in, in years past, which is right outside of San Francisco, uh, which where I think he shot like even par or, or just over par maybe, which is, like a few over, which is a cr- incredible feat in and of itself. But I have a feeling he's going to get the kind of um, he's going to go on the same post retirement like exemption tour that Tony Romo is going to that Tony Romo went on, and he, everybody's going to hate him for it. They're going to be like, "Oh, you're taking all these spots." Like Steph Curry is for sure going to get Corn Ferry Tour exemptions when he retires, and he's going to be out there beating it around. You know, we'll see what he shoots. Um, but he will be getting those exemptions like Tony Romo and everybody in the golf world is going to hate him for it. So. Yeah. It's like taking away a chance that somebody's putting food on their table in a relative way um, for him to get to play in the event. But also when you look at it from a perspective of the tournament, people that are running the tournament, are you going to, are you going to sell more tickets and have more buzz around an event that has Steph Curry in it or, some you know corn fairy tour player that no one's ever heard of so it's kind of a business versus personal debate on that where like you said some dude that's not going to get the chance to play that could be his week where he ends up you know top tenning and then parlays that he got you peter quests it and all of a sudden he's finding himself in the open chain. you know what i mean like that that yeah. can happen any week in golf with any player that's out on the tour corn fairy tour or trying to be on the corn fairy tour etc oh absolutely i mean you know, it is what it is. It's tournament directors get to do what they want. That doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, just because he's taking a spot doesn't mean that somebody else is not getting a spot. So it is what it is. But let's let's move it along to the last major of the season. I want to I want to get into this. Um, the British. Well, not the British Open. I actually heard, you know, why they changed it? Because no, there was an entire article on Golf Digest about the British Open versus the Open Championship question mark. Like and yeah. and I guess it's technically still both. Well, they the only reason they wanted to change it was because it's for not it's for all non-Americans. It's for, you know, for Australians, for Asian players, for English players. So it's basically the world they call it like the world's tournament. So I well, kind of when you win that. it when you win it, you become the champion golfer of the world, which is a pretty dope title. No, that is dope. But at the same time, like you want to call it the open championship, then host it in China, host it in Australia. Like I, and I'm not saying do that, but like it's called the British open because it's in great Britain and Ireland every single year. So that's what annoys me is like, you don't call a tournament something because of who the players are playing in it for. You know what I mean? Like they they don't, you know, the, they call the Canadian Open the Canadian, Canadian Open because it's in Canada. Like, that's just, it just sounds very, uh, very PC to me to be like, oh, well, it's not called the British Open because it's for everyone. Yeah, every golf tournament's for everyone. Like, what are we doing here? The U.S. Open is called the U.S. Open because it's held in America. Like, what the fuck? So I, I think that's just dumb to me. I Maybe that's a, a stupid, stupid take on my part, but it's just like, call it the British Open. That's what it is. Because that every time I say, like, every time I think of it, I say the British Open. I don't say the Open Championship. Like, every tournament's an Open. Your fucking local member guest could be called the Open. Like, you know, it, it, you got to be specific with it. So I, I think the, 
I, I'm just like get off my lawn, kind of taking it here now. So I'll uh, I'll leave that alone. Um, what do you, so? What do you think of uh, what do you think of the course? What do you think of the weather? Um, there's so many different things here that come into play, and that's why it's probably my favorite major of the year. Um, just because it's it's the one where you get to wake up and you're you know you're already watching golf and it, there's so many different you know things to it that make it unlike any other major yeah i love it for that aspect i'm going to be up super early uh with my kid watching it which is awesome but i there is a the sunday scaries hit way harder when there's not you know intense golf shots at like 4 or 5 p.m our time that like win tournaments when it's over at like 10 or 11 i'm not the biggest fan of that but i do enjoy uh the early morning golf and it's a matter of, you know, this course is, is everybody thinks every British open, <laughs> fuck, I just did it. Everybody yeah. thinks every, every open championship is the same in terms of link style golf. And it is, but this is a very different golf course compared to last year playing St. Andrews where, um, some of the pictures I've seen on Twitter of Royal Liverpool, also known as Hoy Lake, uh, there's like out of bounds on 18. That's no joke, 10 feet off the right side of the fairway. So I think there's yeah. going to be a, a big difference of not necessarily the scores to par. I don't remember what Cam Smith wanted at last year at St. Andrews. I want to say it was like in between 12 and 15 under. Uh, I don't think, I think somebody gets there or somebody's right around that nine to 12 under mark. But I do think that it'll be a different style of player that wins it. Like Cam Smith is not great with the driver and can kind of hit it wherever he wants, but his wedges and, and putting are, you know, top notch, top of the world. But I think we'll see somebody that maybe doesn't hit it as far and and can excel on a tighter golf course with less target room to hit it and not not just bombing driver everywhere, bombing and gouging a course for lack of a better term. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a cool venue. It was uh, it's only been at this venue for the Open Championship three times since 1967, and you may know this, but who the last time it was there was 2014, and who won that year? It's Rory. Yeah, so he's the, yeah, so he's quote unquote the defending champion, if you will, not of the event, but of the golf course. And he's also the favorite on bet 365. He won last week. Um, I think the golf course is great. I do like when players just can't bomb it. You know, we, we complained for a while after the U.S. Open about people doing that. Uh, this week they won't be able to. So what's what are your thoughts on on the course and the field? And of course we get to see all the live and PGA Tour guys come together uh, one last time this year. Uh, live had their tournament in London two weeks ago, um, so all the guys were already over there and probably getting their practice rounds in. But what is your what's your feel coming this week? Um, so a few things I think. I'm very excited. Like I said, uh, I think it's obviously a great event. Um, but the few things that I think make this course unique, and I was actually just listening to Scotty Scheffler talk about the course is I, the, the biggest, um, challenge out there is the bunkering. Um, the fairway bunkers, I guess, are like an automatic one stroke penalty. Like you're, you're going out sideways. There's really no chance uh, to advance it more than, you know, 40, 50 yards out of those bunkers. Um, but even Scotty said, and I actually did notice this on some of the, uh, Lynx golf when I was over there playing it years back. Um, there is a few courses and I guess it's this case at Royal Liverpool where the bunker almost slopes front to back, like into the wall. So, if you're getting it closer to the lip, you're actually going to be like on a down slope or a little bit of like a down slope. Like there's no lit, there's no like sand going up to the lip of the bunker, which makes it even tougher. If you're up against the wall, obviously if you have a downhill eye, you're pretty fucking hosed. Um, but he would, that was the first thing that like I've heard Scotty openly knock a golf course for. He goes, I'm personally like not a big fan of it. Um, he just said that in his press conference. So, uh, I, I'm surprised to Sick. hear Scotty say, like, have, like, have a take like that, but I think it is going to be a huge, um, you know, defense of the golf course where these dudes need to hit the fairways in order to really score. And I did look at the weather. Um, and by the way, like people say English weather sucks, but 
it looks like it's going to be like in the mid sixties every day and like rain every like a showers and a little bit of wind. But I would love that. Like I would thrive in that weather. That's what I'm like built for. Maybe, maybe I need to move to England because fuck that looks nice. Like this 90 degrees, all this humidity bullshit out here in New Jersey is it, it's hit. It is hit me very hard. <laughs> yeah, you're not uh, you're not built for the hot, humid weather. But no, uh, great to hear that Scotty doesn't like this golf course. That's a great start uh, for me. He doesn't uh, like in my golf. Well, hopefully he doesn't hit it any of them. But, yeah. Uh, interesting kind of like tidbit is so the last two winners. Do you know who the winner of the Open Championship at this put at Royal Liverpool was before Rory back in 2006? 2006. Don't overthink it. Tiger. Yeah. Okay. So Ti- Tiger won this event in 2006 and never hit driver or Holy like hit shit. it a few times. Like he kept it in the bag 90% of the event. So it's interesting, you know, it's a little longer now and the game of golf in 17 years has changed abundantly in the fact that it's like hit it as far as you can. And that gives you, you know, our boy Lou Stagner told, you know, tells you over and over again, the further you hit it, the better chance you have to make a lower score because your proximity to the hole is a lot closer or from a closer distance. We can get into the weeds on that, but it'll be interesting to see if some of the shorter hitters, the guys like the Brian Harmons, who he's one of my kind of dark horse picks, not officially on my card, but a guy like that, that just puts it and chips it extremely well, doesn't necessarily hit it that far uh, and hits it straight is, is going to do in an event like this at this golf course. Yeah. I mean, it is, it does measure like 7,400 yards, I guess. I don't assume they're going to be playing it from those tees every day, but that's pretty good length for a, a style of course over there where, uh, you know, depending on where the wind is going, it can have a, a huge effect on how long it's playing. Um, I will say that Royal Liverpool does have a short par three. Um, and I actually love the name of it. It's the 15th hole and it's called Little Eye. And Oh, I love that. Right. It looks like a very pushed up green um, with basically runoffs. The front left bunker looks dead, like just a huge... 10, 12 foot slope, like right in front of you. Not even, that's not even the the wall of the bunker. That's the slope once you get out of the bunker. And it looks like it's directly facing the ocean. It's kind of out in that little corner of the property. The property is kind of like a triangle and the, the top, the top of the property is like uh, where this little part three is. So it kind of heads directly out into the ocean. It looks like the longest it can play is 134 yards. Um, but I, and I, I've discussed short par threes at length because I just love them and I think they're they're awesome. But in this case, it actually, I think, makes it harder because these guys are are flighting wet. They're trying to flight wedges, which are harder to like flight down versus like if it was 160 yards, it might actually be an easier hole because these dudes can flight down an eight iron or a seven iron and make like somewhat of a full swing. Like if this is straight into the wind, they're trying to hit, you know, seven iron, six iron, whatever, 130 some yards. Cause we saw at the Scottish last week, there was a hundred and what was it? There was a 150 yard shot that guys were hitting five iron at and four iron at, which is, is crazy, but that's the kind of golf that we will hopefully be seeing this weekend is just all that wind. Um, I'd be reminisced too if I, or remiss if I did not mention last week that they moved up tee times due to the wind which is just complete dog shit to me. Like I, I hated that. Um, Cause that's what, like I, I tweeted it and I'm like, that's like moving up tea times at the waste management because it's hot in Scottsdale. Like you're playing in Scotland. The wind is going to be whipping. That's the fucking point. Like these golf courses in general with no wind are not that hard. Like, Oh, and another quick note now that I'm just back on the Scottish why do they say renaissance? It's renaissance. Like, they, why do English, like, they? even Jim Nance was saying renaissance. I'm like, it's renaissance. It spelt the exact same. Like, why do you need to say it differently? That shit pissed me off. Well, don't you think that they're the ones that originated renaissance and we turned it into renaissance? Like, right. we're, we're, you know, America in, in the English language is way, you know, way younger 
than anything over there in in Britain and the way they the spoke to start the start the entire world. I guess no, no I mean just... that's that's true. But there's also like I know f- for a fact when I was over in Scotland, it pisses people off when you're American and you try to talk like them, like just you're kind of like I wouldn't say you're appropriating their language, but you're like you're just completely butchering the fuck out of it. Like I'd rather just say it like I, I see it. And if I say it in American way, it's because I'm American. Like they're going to say it a certain way because they're like, do you ever hear any British people come to America and try to talk more English, more regular, you know, without an accent, with an American accent? No, I think Americans are the only people that go to other countries and try to talk like those people. (laughs) And just think of how like fucking stupid you look when you're like, one of the dudes I went to Scotland with was like trying to talk in like a Scottish dialect and like say shit. And it is the most embarrassing thing to be around. Like just say it normal. You're not Scottish, you know, like that, that bugs the fuck out of me too. Like I I just, the Renaissance, what is that? That's, that's not the word it's Renaissance. All right. Well, at the (laughs) rent, At not the Renaissance yeah. Club at Royal Liverpool, um, they have lengthened two of the par fives on the back nine um, over 600 yards. So those are going to be, you know, extremely tough if they're into the wind. And since 2014, uh, the tenth hole used to be like a pretty easy uh, par five where guys made a lot of birdies, and they actually transformed that and converted it into a par four. Um, and so it's changed the, you know, the par of the course of, of course, um, but made it a little bit tougher for guys to go lower. Now they're all still playing the same hole. Um, but you know, the, the scoring average on that hole was like a 4.4, um, and which is a pretty easy par five, but now turns it into a really tough par four. So, yeah, that makes sense because I was looking at it on the internet and it said it was a par 72. And then you look at the official like open championship scorecard and it's par 71. So they must have just converted that over. Um, but like you said, at the end of the day, it's just more changing the score to par. It's not, you know, changing the whole, the players are not going to play it any differently because it's a par four versus a par five. It just makes the whole look a little tougher. Like it's not a, just a complete layup. So. Yeah, and then the fourth and fifth hole, the fourth hole is uh, one of our favorites, one of a lot of people's favorites in general is just a drivable four uh, that guys can make eagle on. And then back-to-back on the fifth is like the easiest par five. So you've got two holes in the middle of the front nine where players really need to take advantage of it versus once they get to the back, they have the longer par fives, they have the extremely long par four, and then that extremely tough and brand-new 136-yard hole um, that you were just talking about, the par three which is a whole number uh, 15, seven, 17, they 17 agree. is it. Yeah. So 13, f- 15 is a little bit lengthened, but the it's brand new and it's 136 yards and it's the 17th hole. That's, that's new to this, this coming open championship. Oh, so they rerouted the course. I don't know if they rerouted it or it's just replaced. Like they just made it a lot, that hole a lot shorter and the other hole a bit longer. Because I'm looking right now and the 15th hole is a par three and the 17th hole is a par four. Yeah, so they must have rerouted it. That's interesting. Like, why Why do you need to do that? Well, they did that in another major, right? Where I, I, I just remember it being a, a huge thing during the week where they're like, this used to be the sixth hole and now it's the Oh, oh hole. it was at, uh, um, it was at uh, the course in Boston, the, um, the, the country club. Was it last year's U.S. Open? Brookline, I think, is where they rerouted like 10 and 11 to where they were like, uh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, they that's, you're, you're right, when Matt Fitzpatrick won it. Okay. God damn, look at me go. Look wow. at that. Well well done. But yeah, it's like how much time do these, these fucking, the RNA and stuff have on their hands where they're like, we should reroute this to, I mean, I do like a short part three being the 17th um, because it looked like 16 traditionally how they play at 16 to five and then 17, 18 are both, you know, pretty good length par four. So it's like, why not throw in that short par three with a, a bit of drama there at the end. So rerouting a golf course is always just like, who thinks of that, who approves that and like, who thinks it's a good idea because 
golf courses are built with the intention of having these holes in a certain order. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but this golf course was built in like 1867. So I, I don't think, uh, I don't oh, think they were necessarily like the stadium right now around the, the 17th, the par three. It looks so good. I can't oh, yeah, dude. Oh, open championship golf is great. Well, we're going to finish this pot up by giving you guys our picks. Once again, all odds are from our friends over at bet three, six, five, make sure to check that app out and use the promo code DNVR three, six, five to get your bets in. I'll start with my picks because I'm captain mush this week. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. Um, but I, my picks this week were, Based on, I did a little research based on last open championship that was at this golf course, uh, the style of game these guys play, and then just kind of my gut feeling. But also, kind of my number one thing was if this guy wins and I don't bet on him, who will I be the most pissed off that won the event? Like last week, bet not betting on Rory at the Scottish was kind of a big L and it kind of hurt. You know, we had Tyrrell Hatton, I had, we had Tom Kim two guys that were both leading the event at some point late in the weekend and couldn't finish. Yeah. Um, there's but Rory, a value there when you're betting on a guy that's plus seven, like Rory's plus plus seven fifty to win the, the British or the open championship. No, exactly. But, um, uh, my, my first pick is a guy that I'll just cheer for him. Um, I, if I put him on the betting card, it makes it easy to root for him. And that's Scotty Scheffler at plus eight fifty Cause that is boosted on the bet three, six, five. So I'm getting an extra hundred. I'm getting an extra unit off of that dub if he takes it home. Uh, and then I'm going with him, uh, in the top five at plus plus one ninety. not the top 10, the top five. This guy is a top 10 machine. He hits the ball. Great doesn't miss a lot of golf shots. If he can get the putter going, he can win this event. Hasn't won a major this year uh, and is still one of the best players in the world. So I, I I don't think we'll go, as long as he stays on the trajectory he's on, I don't think we'll go the next three to four years without him winning a major every single year. So I think Scotty Scheffler is a good pick. Not great value at plus 850, but um, everybody's going to be betting Rory. And you know, like you said, we said earlier, it's plus 550 for him to miss the cut. I'm not going to go that crazy. But I don't think he wins this event. I'm going to keep him off the card and go with Scotty Scheffler. And then a little bit more down the list here on Bet365, I'm going to go to my guy, Brooks Kepka. Uh, the events he's won and the majors he's won in his career, five of them, uh, have all been on courses that are the same type of tight style. He's not, uh, you know, he didn't play as well at the o uh, U.S. Open. Uh, he was very audibly loud about not liking the golf course. Uh, he hasn't said anything or I haven't heard him say anything about Royal Liverpool, but his, all his major championship wins have been at tight golf courses where it's been, you know, hit the fairway. He likes to hit a lot of irons off tees. He can do that and he can win here. Uh, he's comp he competed at Augusta this year. Of course, then he won the PGA championship. Uh, and then he, you know, competed at the U S open until the last day. So he's in his, the, the form of his game is in good shape. He played well. Uh, he's played well in the live tour all year and, and this, this golf course just sets up well for him. So I think, um, as far as Brooks Kepka goes, he is plus 2,200 to win. That's another boost. So, uh, I always get scared when stuff gets boosted and then I bet on it. seems like it should hit when it's, it shouldn't hit when it's boosted. Cause they're just trying to give you free money and that's not what normal sports books are about, but I'm going to fall into the trap and bet Brooks Kepka at plus 2,200. My final pick, this guy played really well here in 2014, which is crazy to think about because he still seems so young to, uh, to me, but Ricky Fowler, he is plus 2000 to win this event as well. Um, play, like I said, played well here at this exact golf course in 2014. So he's got, um, some familiarity with it and he's, he won the rocket mortgage. He's been playing well up until this point. He did not play in the Scottish open. So a little interesting there, but sometimes, um, I've read a, a few stats that have said, players that have won the open championship, like the last 10 years have either been missed the cut the week before or the year before at the open championship did not play well. And we know Ricky hasn't really gotten his game back into form until this last six to eight weeks. Um, and I feel like it's a good pick and it's another guy that if he wins it, I would be livid. Um, he's, he's, he blew the U S open. I think he could come back and win the open championship at plus 2000 this week. Okay, I like that. Um, real quick announcement before I get to my picks. I just saw that Matthew Fitzpatrick got his braces off 
I just saw uh, uh, an interview with him and he did not, did no longer have braces. So you didn't know that that's old news. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Well, either way, I think that that's a good sign for him this week uh, to possibly, he's not on my betting card, but he's a guy that could do it. And his brother's playing in the event too. His brother yeah, got see, into that's the very cool. His brother qualified dope. like some crate. I saw him like whole bunker shot on one knee. So, I mean, it's it's got to be good to be the Fitzpatrick brothers. Probably. Oh, and I got to throw right now better than the Smith brothers for sure. But I do have to throw in my bonus bet of the week. Yeah, and that is Mike Michael Kim to top ten at plus thirteen hundred. So that's my Ooh. bonus unit bet of the week is Michael Kim top ten yeah. plus thirteen hundred. Okay. Um, so I am going back to the well. I think Tyrrell Hatton had the kind of week last week that could push him to win this week. He played very well. He was in the lead at multiple points. Um, real quick, we talk about Tyrrell Hatton, like just pissing away the last like three holes of every single round. Like I think on, was it Saturday? He three putted 17 and 18 and just like, the way he three putted 17, it was like the way that we would three putt uh, seven, you know, any hole. Like he left the – on 16, he left his putt way short. So then he just like – it almost like you could see he was angry and he just like hammered it by like 10 feet like fuck it, like he didn't care. So that was a very like amateur move on his part. Um, so he was – he should have – he really should have won that event. He was at – you know, 12, 13, 14 under multiple times and just proceeded to like piss it away. And I really think that like his attitude does get in his way sometimes because he's so negative to a point where it really can't like you can visibly watch his golf game get dragged down by his attitude. Um, so I think if he just keeps a strong attitude this week and keeps his head down, like this is his home country. Um, so definitely something that means something to these guys for sure. Uh, so he's plus 2,200 to win plus 240 top 10. I like both of those. Uh, I definitely think not regardless, but if he does not win, I think he'll be right up near the top of the leaderboard, just like he was last week. Um, my other pick Victor Hovland, I feel like he's kind of due for a major um, won a big event earlier this year in Ohio. Um, and his ball striking is just super solid. If he can keep it going on the greens and just make a few putts, uh, his ball striking is just some of the best in the world week in week out. So he's plus 2000 to win plus 225 to top 10. And then I took a little bit of a flyer on a dude that, uh, I've spoken about a few times, um, but doesn't seem to get that much recognition. He finished top 20 last week at the Scottish, but he was kind of within earshot quite a few different times um, of, you know, getting close to that lead and possibly winning last week. Uh, Sam Burns, he's plus 5,500. Like he, he's a top 20 in the world guy. Like he should not be in my opinion, that far out to, uh, to win the event plus 5,500 to win and plus 500 to top 10. Like, I feel like that's very good value for a, a player of his, of his capability. And then my bonus bet, is Keegan Bradley. The dude just has a very, very good, consistent ball striking reputation. He is constantly hitting fairways, hitting his, his ability to hit irons is probably top five on tour. I would say uh, proximity to hole, all of that. He's like top in all iron categories, which uh, the British open is the open championship. Excuse me. Is uh, generally a, a very much a second shot golf tournament. Uh, links courses in general are more, more second shot golf tournaments. Of course, your drives, you have to be findable and, and in play, but, um, placement on the greens here is going to be huge and, and really rolling the flat stick too, which Keegan has done much better this year. So he's plus 800 to top 10, which I feel like is a very, very good value. Um, so that is my bonus bet is Keegan Bradley top 10 at plus 800. Beautiful. So we've got. Brooks Kepka, Ricky Fowler, Scotty Scheffler, Tyrrell Hatton, Sam Burns, and, and I forgot your other one. Victor Hovland. Victor Hovland, the Swede, the Finn. Swede or Finn? Finn. I don't the know. Finn. I don't no, know he's, a, he's a Norway. Finn. 
from Norway, actually. We were we were both way off there. From but yeah, Oslo. I, I, oh yeah, I think that's Norwegian. technically. Do they have nicknames for them? The Norse. The Norse. Okay, I like that. Victor the Nor. Um, and no, but that uh, wraps it up for us this week. Appreciate you guys all tuning in. If you're li- watching this on the YouTube, like and subscribe. Our YouTube channel is at Big Drive Energy. Make sure to check us out on Twitter at Big Drive Energy. On Instagram at Big Drive Energy Pod. We give you uh, reels each week. We give you podcast clips. There's uh, we sometimes say funny things, so those usually go up on Instagram. If you didn't miss it, if you missed it last week, Mitchell was talking about his sunburned belly button all time clip. Uh, we've got great clips coming out each week as well as um, reels from the golf course, reels from us playing, and our Big Bet Energy picks for each tournament where we are currently up 25 units on the year. So make sure you're tuning in to all of those. We appreciate you all listening. Give us a a rating if you're listening to this on the audio version, whatever podcast platform you listen to. Enjoy the Open Championship. It's our last major of the year. We'll be coming at you live on Sunday when the leaders hit 16, talking about the end of the Open Championship and wrapping it up, and hopefully talking about one of our guys winning the event. Until then, we'll talk to you guys Sunday. Peace. Peace.